Hello, hello, hello everyone, AgroVMX here, and welcome back with more Dragon Quest VI, and hey, we have game audio. Listen to that. I, yeah, what happened was, um, I changed my whole setup and had to move the computer, and so I had to break everything down, move it, and then put everything back together, so, um, I realized it when I was streaming at first that, um, you know, somebody told me they couldn't hear in-game audio, and I was like, huh, why is that? And then I realized it was set for a different USB thing, because I just didn't plug everything in the exact same USBs. So, um, because, I mean, I have, like, eight USB things, so. Anyway, um, yeah, that's, that's a whole thing. Um, it was only three videos, thankfully, but we're all set up here. We're all ready to go. So, uh, we did the mini metal stuff, so I guess we're gonna head towards Clearvale now. Um... So let's head to uh, the other world, really. We're, yeah, I believe so, at least. Yeah, and then we're gonna zoom over to How Castle. Yep. So if you guys remember, I uh, pointed out that there was a shrine down there. That's actually where where we're headed now. I can't wait to see what's inside this old shrine. Let's get that door open and head on inside. What have we got to lose? We are fortunate that King Howell's generous spirit blessed us with this magic key. Danger, keep out. So we're gonna go in here. And it's one of those magic wells, so we're actually gonna be swapping worlds here, but after we fight a scare well, that is. Yeah, these guys are actually really easy. They're like mimics for wells, but they're very easy to kill. I didn't realize I hadn't healed. Oh well, no big deal. That actually might do it right there. Nope, didn't. Okay. Oof. This guy's not dead yet. Holy shit. Alright, probably the last round here. Maybe I should have used abilities and shit. Nope, that got him. We got him. Somebody leveled. Somebody leveled. Guane, level 15. Nice. Carver's Thief level increases. He's now a Purse Snatcher. He's a Wig Snatcher. And he learned Eye for Distance. Cool. Oh, wrong button. So this will bring us into the dream world again. So we're in a new area of the dream world. For a second there, I thought we'd come out in the same spot we went in. Lofty mountains surround the area to the north. I suggest that we head to the south. Which is, yeah, basically what we're going to do. Let's see, we ended up in the lower world, so this may be the upper world. So we're going to head down this way. Should be a town. Roundabouts here somewhere. Uh, two lesser demons are not with each other. They're like, I'm up with him. I'm up with him. We don't even know each other. <laughs> Got him. There we go. Uh, Carver stole an iron claw. That's a, when you start leveling up as a thief, you start stealing random items in battle, which is pretty cool because you could sell them and whatnot. So this is Clearville. Come on, Rick, let's try talking to some of the locals. May the goddess bless this town. This town's kind of quaint and everything like that, eh? Welcome to Clearville. Our town slogan is, Eye the skies for the bed that flies. The bed that flies? More like a bed of lies. I'll believe it when I see it. I wonder if such a bed really exists. I confess I've never heard of a flying bed. Okay. All right, so we're just gonna, yeah. Move around, talk to people. I admit it, I'm the biggest flying bed fanatic around, but I'll have to find a new obsession if I don't catch a glimpse of, catch a glimpse of it soon. Perhaps it's just a bed that makes those who sleep on it dream they are flying. This bed seems so well known that I'm surprised none of us have ever heard of it. Folks really have a lot of free time on their hands these days, don't they? <laughs> it's funny because like, um, Ah, oh, wrong button. Like, we're in a dream world, and they know we're in a dream world, and we've already seen some shit, so it's amazing that Carver would be like, yeah, pff, that's not a thing. I kind of got lost, so I'm staying with these people for now. The flying bed? Gosh, yeah, I saw it once. The boy who was riding on it looked a little older than me. Was it Nemo? I sense he's telling the truth. Whoa, so the bed was flown by a kid? Really? So that child who got lost wandered here? Let's see here, what sounds tasty today? Hmm, what's for dinner, I wonder? What an elegant young lady. Let's not disturb the dinner preparations. That's important shit, you gotta eat. My wife Alicia took in a boy we found wandering around out front to spell back. Seems the poor lad got lost. Anyway, he seems unusually fond of my wife. 
I feel bad for the kid and all, but sometimes I feel like we're competing for her attention. <laughs> what a wiener. It is deeply admirable to take on a lost child. His wife must have a heart of gold. Imagine being jealous of a little kid like that. <laughs> I'm with Carver, that's ridiculous. A mini medal, a miniature medallion, a minimalistic medallionic artisanal piece, a fucking coin. Actually, that's that's 30, right? I can go get that, that thing. I'll probably do that before I even explore the rest of the town. Warrior Cat Tales Part 4. Meow. Welcome to one cat's catalog of feline fabulousness. By the time I was three, I thought there was no enemy in the whole world who could ruffle my fur. And one day I encountered another, another slime. Fearing nothing, I let the slime gloop towards me. The next thing I knew, I was halfway down the hill, covered in a layer of viscous goo. I had been well and truly slimed. I only learned later that it was a world-famous heavyweight slime known as Victor. I'm still proud to have come out of it with most of my nine lives still intact. The end. Victor fucked him up. Alright, let me, let me, let me head over to Medford's Manor, like, now. Uh, since I can do that. Yeah, there it is. And we can warp right back here to Clear Veil, no problem. Because I was only one mini metal away. <laughs> Out of the way, dude. Yeah, yeah, we know all about it, King Medford. Okay. So that's 30, and I get a uh, platinum sword, I think? Yep, platinum sword. Ba 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 ba! Alright, so what's the next thing? 40 will give me a miracle sword. That's a really good weapon, too. Alright, so where is it? Platinum sword. I'm gonna give that to Wreck. There we go. Nice. Get out of the way, dude. All right. So let's warp back to Clearvale. There's not a whole lot to do in this town other than gather information and get a few items. So, you know, we'll continue doing that. Wait, hold on a sec. I had gone down here. Okay. I want to kind of pick up where I left off, you know? Uh, there's no real reason to go down there. Hey, <laughs> that little missy is quite smitten with me. Guess I still got it. If this is a dream, I don't want to wake up, hey? <laughs> Crikey, there's got to be more to this picture. Age is just a number, isn't it? Millie, that's creepy. I am unqualified to comment on romantic matters. I know it's absolutely scandalous, but what can I say? I cannot stinking up stop thinking about this older man. I suppose love really is blind, isn't it? Good thing I gave up trying to understand ladies a long time ago. I'm afraid I cannot comment on matters of the heart. I don't think there's anything scandalous about following one's heart. Ah, if it is, if you're Woody Allen. Hey, look who I found. Goo whiz! Don't slurp up on me like that! What am I gooing? Waiting for the bed to fly out of the house, of course, but gooly I can't wait! What a perfectly lovely, lovely town. Oh, they're actually not uh, commenting on the heel slime. All right, let's check out what kind of weapons and armor we can get here. Oh, it looks like the weapon shops only open at night, and the oh, that's a bank. Armor shops open during the day. That's annoying. Go up here real quick. I like to buy weapons first. Nothing. Nothing. Meow, meow. I'm not even sure what I expected there, but yeah. I'll come back here. We'll figure things out. I don't even know if I have, like, a, a time sw switch spell. There's the church. I'll just look in there to see if there's anybody to talk to other than the priest. Murdaw may be a thing of the past, but the monster hordes show no signs of dwindling. Perhaps some evil is still at work out there somewhere. But how can I explain this to our followers? They believe all is well in the world again. I hope she can live in a peaceful world one day. I sympathize deeply with the nun's sentiment. She's got a point. Beating Murdaw and Jamaris hasn't thinned out the monsters any, eh? Get some holy water. Okay. And nothing. Okay. Anything here? Smashy, smashy. Nothing there. Okay. Good day. Come to see the flying bed, have you? Uh, let's go with yes. Oh, shucks. I hate to be a wet blanket, but we haven't had a bed sighting in quite a spell. A bed that flies is a pretty outlandish concept, even for the dream world. We didn't come for a flying bed, but let's keep on eye in the sky regardless, I. Eh? The world's full of marvels and miracles. Who's to say what is possible? That house up there has been empty for ages, but there's something funny. But there's some funny business going on, by golly. I saw the flying bed launch from the second floor balcony once. Swear to the goddess. Launch from the balcony? I can't help but be curious. So in other words, the house warrants investigation. The flying bed? Off the balcony? Or maybe a bed fell off the balcony and scrambled his egg. 
Jesus Carver. The boy in this grave was more than my master. He was my best friend. Oh, this guy's a dog in the real world. Mind speaking a prayer for him? Maybe it'll fetch him some happiness in the afterlife. We should pray for his master. I pray that he may rest in peace. Throw him a bone and say a prayer, wreck. <laughs> it's almost like Carver knows the guy's a dog. I guess he can't get in there just, just yet. We will be coming back here, but uh, there's not, not much point to it right now. There's no reason to go down there. Come on. Did I talk to this guy already? Yes, I did. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. All right, this is just up here, really. The end. Hark, I have journeyed many leagues to this hamlet, chasing tales of a bed that flies. Forsooth, I figured, only a fairy tale village would pray host to such a romantic tale. Alas, the magical mystery bed is missing in action. This town's a bit of a bore. It is the tale of my life. So the flying bed's full in the coop, eh? I wonder why the flying bed disappeared. How could a bed go missing? Perhaps it flew off on its own. <laughs> chicken here. Some rags? Okay. Okay. We gotta come here in the real world, but... Yeah. Nothing? Nothing. Okay, I'll show you how to do that soon, but... Wanna look at the equipment, you know? Traveling with a partner can be a rewarding experience. You look like adventurers. I'm sure you can relate. I mean, even if you hate the guy at the start, the hardships of the road build a powerful bond, right? He's right. Any journey is more enjoyable with good friends, isn't it? Aye, any trip is a good trip with the right folks by your side. I would not have been blessed with the chance to join this quest were it not for you, Wreck. Oh man, I blew it again. Oh, I'm sorry, boss. It seems like these two are traveling together. It's good to travel with people of different vocations. When you fail, when you fall, your partner can pick you up. Huh, he must have messed up in his dream. It sounds like his boss is an intimidating figure. I got a dancer's costume. That might be good, let me look at that. It's early enough in the game where a dancer's costume might be useful. I mean, it brings style up, but... Eh, I guess it's not. Oh, well. And nothing there. Okay. I think that's pretty much it, but I want to check the... Um, I want to come here at night. And check weapons. And I don't think I have an ability to change time yet. Uh, well, she has nap. Oh no, that's okay. That's not what that is. It would be like cockadoodaloo or you know something like that. We'll just um, just do this for just fidget about until it's nighttime. Oh wait a minute, wait a minute. Is there even a day and night in this game? Hold on, I don't think there is. I'm thinking like Dragon Quest V. Um, yeah, there might not even be. I might have to just come there in the other world. Like there might be only one store. Like only armor in this town in in the in the dream world, and I, I yeah. Now that I come to think of it, I don't think this game has that. Let me let me see something real quick here. I mean, it does show a weapon and armor shop there. Weapon shop, sledgehammer, but okay. So there is nighttime. Is there? I don't think I. Now, now I'm like second guessing myself here. Can I just kind of? Oh, right. Man, I wish I remembered more about this game. All right. So I'm like, wait a minute. Okay, so it's got Sledgehammer, Battle Axe, uh, Cautery Sword, Dream Blade's new. Well, that, the Dream Blade is actually a little better than the Platinum Blade. I thought it would have been the other way around. And a Spike Steel Whip. Um, okay, so here's what I'm thinking here. So, since Carver can't use the Dream Blade, but Wreck can, here's what I'm thinking. So, I will take this Platinum Sword and transfer it to Carver, since he can use it, but he can't use the other thing. And then I'll just go back to Wreck having the Battle Axe, and we'll get him a Dream Blade. I believe the Dream Blade's mechanic is that it will occasionally put enemies to sleep. Okay, so we're going to need three of them. For Rek, Guane, and Amos. So it's going to take a bit. This costs 6300 Spike Steel Whip, thankfully, we don't have to get. I can do off-screen grinding. But let's get one for you right now. I have some stuff to sell. I thought the Platinum Sword would have been better, but it's not. Okay. Okay, so let me, let me sell off some stuff, though, before we go grinding. Okay, so definitely sell off his Battle Axe. This is still armor to get, too. 
Okay, so you have a fire claw, which I must have taken that. No, he was using that for a while. He was using that, and I just took it off of him. So he won't be able to attack twice anymore, but you know. Uh, poison needle I found in a chest somewhere. We'll sell that. And uh, we got an iron cuirass. And an iron claw as well. I think I stole that off an enemy. All right. All right, so you have the Lunar Fan. We can get rid of that. There's a lot of money I'm getting, so maybe I don't have to grind here. Okay, the rags, definitely don't need that. And the dancer's costume. Anything else here? Oh, I have a stone axe here. Let's sell that. And anything that might be in the bag that I... I brought more rags. I realize I had so many rags. This bone steak. I think that was dropped by an enemy at some point. Uh, that looks like that's it. All right. Well, I have lots of money. All right, so let's get another Dream Blade. We'll give this one to Amos. And another one for Gawain. And I have plenty of money to spend on armor, so maybe we don't have to uh, worry about that. Oh, that was my bad. I was like, wait, maybe it's only open. But I was like, wait a minute, this doesn't have a day and night thing. Okay, so we have full plate armor, we have silver cuirass, we have silver mail, which is better. Let's, uh, we're gonna need a lot of that. Okay, so we'll get, this'll be for wreck. And, uh, yeah, it pretty much taps us out right there, so let me sell his silver cuirass. Okay, so let's see. Uh, so we're going to need... Silver mail for Carver, for Amos, and for Gawain. We don't need any of that. We don't need any of that. And we don't need any of that. So really, it's just three silver mails at 6300 a pop. I'm going to pause. I'm not going to bother showing, like, like unpausing and whatnot, because I'm probably going to play music. Like, mute the game and play music while I grind. So that's what I'm going to do. We'll see you guys in just a moment, and uh, we'll probably have different locations and shit. We'll show you guys that. Be right back. And I'm back. Wasn't that fast? It was like a half hour for me. Um, got all the weapons and armor and everything. Also leveled up a bit. And I went a little further just because some location vocations were very close to popping. But as you can see, uh, levels are up a little bit. Rec is still a martial artist. He's up to instructor. Uh, Carver's still a thief. He's up to cat burglar. Uh, Millie's still a warrior. She's up to Elite Blade. Neven, uh, she only has to go up one more time, and she'll have Mastered Warrior. Neven is still a priest. He's up to Bishop. Millie uh, finished out Dancer. She's now a Luminary, and she's up to the third level, which is called Debutante. Um, Amos is still a Merchant. He's he's at the second to last level. He's at Magnate, and uh, Gawain is a, still a warrior. He's all the way up to Expert Fencer, so we made quite a bit of... Um, quite a bit of progress there. So we're actually going to go to Clearvale, and you're like, we're in Clearvale. Yeah, I know. But we're going to go to Clearvale in the real world. We're in the dream world. So I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to go this way. If you go this way long enough. Oop. Okay, so we got a prickly prankster and a lesser demon. Nothing really special here. Ooh. Yeah, that, that Dream Blade actually procs quite a bit of putting enemies to sleep, which made grinding at the Spiegel, Spiegel Spire a lot easier. Okay, and there we are. There's a staircase. So we could use that, and now we're here in the real world. We're going to go back this way. The map's a bit different, but it's still pretty much, yeah, just... You know, kind of in relation, it's kind of the same. So we got a Flython and a Toxic Turnip. They're just gonna go ahead and just attack me before I can even finish saying what I'm fighting, but you know, whatever. Right, whoop. Oh, I was gonna say nobody got poisoned, but then at the end, even got poisoned. Oh well, no big deal. Not a big deal, NBD. Let's we'll do this. Okay. 
Should be just about there, no? Oh. What do we got? More Flythons. All right. <coughs> mm, bloody hell. Boom! Crit! I feel like I should have reached it already. Hmm. Oh, is that, is that it? I doubt it. That looks like it's Destiny's Drop. Alright, Flython and a Toxic Turnip. Probably should have went after the Toxic Turnip first, because he can mass poison, but whatever. None of these enemies are very hard. I don't think that's... I think this is Destiny's Drop here. Yeah, it's Destiny's Drop. Well, that's the next dungeon, but where's the... damn town? Scorching Man and some Harmers. Not really threatened by these enemies. Calling in your buddies the Heel Slimes. Harmer and the Heel Slimes. I like Healy and the Harmers. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Oh, there it is. I somehow walked, like, pretty much right by it. Okay. So here we are. Could this be? May the goddess bless this town. This place really looks familiar, right? What ho! Welcome to Clearville, friends. Clearville, eh? Of course, this is Clearville. So this is the real world, Clearville. I say, have you heard the rumors about a terribly steep mountain known as Destiny's Drop? Uh, not yet, no. They say a swordsman climbed that mountain long ago, caught off a piece of the Crag of Courage at the summit, and took it with him. If that swordsman can do it, so can we. I wonder if our destiny is somehow entwined with Destiny's Drop. Oh, hold on, I gotta... That's AJ, let me let, let them know that I'm recording. Okay. Um, uh, there you are, and I'm recording. Oh. Yeah, I think our destiny might be entwined with a place called Destiny's Drop. Makes sense, right? Could this drop be part of our destiny? Oh, AJ says y'all the widest. Just so you know. Uh, might as well stay here. I don't see any reason not to. Got plenty of money. <laughs> this carver was stealing items, too, which I sold. Golly! <laughs> Do try to resist the temptation of peeking at me in the bath. I'll see you later, eh? <laughs> wow, you became a completely different person. Avast, what was that thing? Oh, goddess, my eyes, they must be purified. Oh, goddess, I really wish I hadn't seen that. Alright, we've got a set of rags, whatever on that. Oh, Japan. Nothing. And we got Wayfarer's clothes, which is not super useful. Nothing. And nothing. I used to be a dancer at Somnia Castle. I came here looking for Tom Foolery, the entertainer. I'd do anything to be his apprentice. I heard he was in the town, but it turns out he ain't here. I'm gutted. That's, enter That's entertainers for you. They flit about like leaves on a breeze. All the way from Somnia, that tomfoolery must be uh, put on one heck of a show. I'm sure this tomfoolery never made it as far as Ghent. Well, hello there. How about a little patty cake? Eh? Me? A man? Gosh, you are one. Surely you've never seen a man this beautiful, have you? Hee hee hee. I pray the goddess does not strike that bunny girl down for uh, uh, her crimes against nature. Neven, you intolerant boob. Damn. She ain't too ugly if you don't mind man hands. Carver's practical as always. Look at that five o'clock shadow. Oh my. That is rough. Jesus, I forgot that that scene existed. Dragon Quest, what the fuck? <laughs> Alright. I know you gotta go to the sh church, but let me go everywhere else first. In olden times, all sorts of traveling entertainers would visit this town. One of them, Tom Foolery, was a, uh, really rather good. The children would be ever so excited when he'd visit. But I suppose it's just not safe for entertainers to be traveling about in this day and age. We better do something about these monsters, I. Otherwise, folks will just stay at home and mope. 
With a name like Tom Foolery, how entertaining could his act possibly be? Tom Foolery. Where have I heard that name before? I can't seem to remember. Look, oh, okay, see, this is the item shop. Uh, you sell silver tiaras there, which I don't really care about, but there they are. Hey, hey, lady. My darling husband is so terribly kind, and he's got a first-class mind, too. I don't half feel blessed, you know. Her aura is positively glowing with joy. More lovey-dovey stuff. Okay. I believe she's found true happiness. I'm conducting research into people's dreams, don't you know? Why do people dream? What do dreams mean? Fascinating questions, one and all. One day I will unravel the mysteries of the dream world. I'm jolly well certain of it. We know a thing or two about the mysteries of the dream world, don't we, Breck? Dreams are indeed fascinating. A realm where anyone can become whatever they want. Sounds like one big excuse to sleep on the job to me. A mini metal. A miniature medallion. A minimalistic medallion that costs a single piece, a fucking coin, a damn dime. We got a slime story part six. My name is Uzo. My dream for this is for this name to drip from the lips of all the people of the world. Lord Dripping Ooze had off said there are countless roads upon... Oh, the uh, Upon? There are countless roads open to the open-hearted slime. With these words in mind, I squelched back to my home for the first time in three days since embarking on my epic quest. With some trepidation, I had a fair amount of difficulty. I took up a new weapon, the pen. The words oozed from within, and before I knew it, I had completed the tome you now hold. I had no doubt that a slime story will make the world's foremost literary slime the end. So, the whole slime and cat thing has come to an end. <laughs> oh, Alicia, I cannot fathom why you'd marry that scholar. Dash it all, he's old enough to be your father. Alicia, you are the woman of my dreams. I wonder she didn't choose him. He cries like a girl. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Carver. The goddess moves in mysterious ways. The poor man? This Alicia must have dumped him. My party is so insensitive. Love it. It's a jolly good show that my son's got himself a wife, but now I feel like a gooseberry in my own home. If only I could find a spiffing young girl of my own, all my dreams would come true. Hey, <laughs> Yeah, I bet. That fellow's pretty spry for his age, eh? That's why in his dreams he was with a young woman. He's still young at heart. I know little of love, but it's said that it keeps the spirit young. Anything back here? No, okay. Alright, let's check these out. Mr. and Mrs. Tress are on the most terrible state. Matt was a jolly good lad. I wonder if I can fulfill Tom Foolery's promise to the boy. A handmade badge of courage. A climbing Destiny's Drop would be impossible for someone like me. It's a dashed shame. Hmm? Destiny's Drop? I believe you can find it nestled in the mountains just northeast of town. Destiny's Drop is northeast of here, eh? Right? I'm committing that to memory. Yeah, we've already been there. Something horrible must have happened to this Matt. Can Destiny's Drop really be so steep that he judges it impossible to scale? Let's see, do you have anything? Probably not. Probably the same shit. Yeah, it's the same exact shit. Okay. Even in your dreams, you saw that shit. What about your shit? Do you sell the same shit that you saw in your dreams? The exact same shit. That makes it easier on me. <laughs> what ho! Have you seen Matt around? I can't find him anywhere. He promised he'd be let me ride to bed too. <laughs> Little girl. How do I explain this to you? He trying to smash, okay? Just so you know, okay? And and y'all, y'all just way too young for that shit. So you stay here and play with your rubber ducky and your giant ball. Has Matt disappeared then? Perhaps this Matt will be home in time for dinner. Did a friend skid out on her or something? Nothing. Got some money. Got fifty money. All right. My little girl was chums with the Teresa's boy, Matt. I don't have the heart to tell her that he's gone. That's that's a tough one, I. There are things when children are too young to fully understand. Losing someone is never easy. I think Matt was the, the lost boy we saw in the dream world. Uh, that's sort of the implication there. One doesn't reach his age without experiencing both good times and bad. But I'll tell you, there's nothing more heartbreaking than witnessing the death of those younger than yourself. I. God knows I'd hate to see anyone die, no matter what their age. It sounds like that woman is enduring a recent loss. All things must pass, as they say, but it is tragic when young people go before their time. Matt couldn't leave his bed because of his illness, but he said he didn't mind at all. Can you imagine not being able to go anywhere? My, that would be simply awful. If it were me, I don't think I could put up with it. It is tragic when a child is confined to their bed. I couldn't imagine be anything worse than being all cooped up. Matt sounds like a spirited child. So there's Matt's dog. We met him as a human in the other world. Arf, arf. 
It's almost like the dog has come to the grave to, to pray. That is a wise looking dog. Look at that pup. He's man's best friend to the end, and then some. Yeah, we got a walnut, which is a seed of strength. Let's use that right away. Okay, we're gonna be ending soon. I just wanna finish up in town here. Nothing! Nothing! What do we got here? Nothing! Nothing! Did I go up in here? Probably not. No, I did not go up in there. This is Matt's area. It's locked. Can't get in there. Okay. Let's see, is there anything else I've missed? Uh, I mean, we already went to the inn and all. This looks like we're just going to the church. Pastor, pray tell us. Our son Matthew, do you think he was happy? From the moment he was born, he was bedridden with illness, and before he could arise, he was taken by the goddess. He was only ten years old. I have a hard time believing he ever knew happiness. Come now, love, we shouldn't dwell upon such things. That's what the pastor said, isn't it? Even Matt's death at such a young age is all part of the goddess's plan, part of his fate. Only Matt himself can say whether that fate was a happy one or not. But... <clears throat> pastor Bedtime. Jesus. If I may, there is no doubt that young Matthew's past was a tragedy of the highest order. However, looking at the two of you, there is a thing I can be sure of. Any child who received that much love from his parents could possibly have been unhappy. I have no doubt that Matthew felt your love for him, and that it brought him great happiness. Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much. Well, let's head home, love. We need to put fresh flowers on Matt's grave. Yes, of course, darling. Thank you, Pastor. If you'll excuse us. I hope to see you again soon. I shall pray for the goddess to bless you both. Don't pay us no mind, huh? Oh my, I can only imagine what those parents must be going through. Talk about a sad tale, eh? Destiny is at work here. Let us pray for the child's soul. Alright, nothing there. Mr. and Mrs. Tress come here every day to pray for their son, Matthew. It seems they made some kind of promise to their son that they were unable to keep. I'm sure if they could only somehow fulfill this promise, it would lift some of the terrible burden from their shoulders. I probably should have talked to the ca characters, let's see. Oh, I'll talk to her again. To get their reaction. A promise, eh? What kind of promise, I wonder? That couple story has really affected me. Let's visit their house and see if there isn't anything we can do for them, Rack. I have faith that their prayers have reached their son. Alright, so now we go to their house. We've already been there, but they weren't there. Now they'll be there. Like I said, we'll end it very soon. I just want to finish up in town here. My son Matthew. He always looked forward to Tom Foolery's visits, visits to town. Tom was so fond of him as well. They were really rather chummy. Tom promised Little Matt the next time he'd visit, he'd give him a badge of courage. He said if he were to wear the badge, made from a shard of the crag of courage, his illness would soon clear up. But that was the last we saw of Tom Foolery. He never visited again, and eventually Matthew passed away. He was so excited about Tom's visit of the badge, if only we could have made the badge and put it on his grave. Oh, Matthew. So just chip off a piece of the crag to make a badge of courage, eh? Ain't that interesting. Getting a shard of courage ourselves would be faster than tracking down this Tom Foolery. It's up to us to leave this badge of courage on Matthew's grave. Hm? Oh, hello there. What business do you have here? I'm afraid we don't offer shelter for travelers or anything like that. That fellow looks foul, but seems fair, eh? Way to quote Lord of the Rings. They must have come straight from the church. Maybe we should move on, Rack. We don't want to disturb them. Okay, so obviously we got to go to Destiny's Drop and get the, the, the piece of rock. But um, we're going to stop here. Um, I'm going to do a hard save. I didn't get to last time. I'm only good for one video today. All right, so we'll do that. Here we go. 1547? Yeah, that was a while ago. Okay, alright, I'll see you guys real soon with more Dragon Quest VI, Realms of Revelation. Peace!